Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach and midlife mentor. And once again, I'm so glad to be here with you for this week's episode, which is all about being naked, afraid, and vulnerable in midlife. And I am not talking about that TV show, Naked and Afraid. There is no way in the world I would ever do that show. (laughs) Can you imagine? (laughs) Oh my God, I doubt you would either. But something happened to me last week that got me thinking about being naked and afraid in midlife. And you know me, just like when my underwear fell down in the parking lot at the grocery store, I knew I had to share it with you and get you thinking too. Now, before we take our clothes off, though, I want to say hello to my new listeners and make sure that you know that nothing scary will happen to you during this episode. You don't have to get naked. I'm just joshing with you about the whole naked thing but there's something to learn about it for sure. And if you're a regular listener, awesome. So glad you're here again, because as you know, you're not alone and we're gonna tackle another riveting midlife topic together that will make you think for sure. So we're all about thinking here on the Women in the Middle podcast, so let's dive in. Last week was a little different for me. The reason is because the end of the week was punctuated by some pretty intense back pain. You know, the kind that stops you in your tracks and makes you notice. (laughs) There's no avoiding it. And say a bunch of swear words, some louder than others. Now, my lower back is my weak link, actually. It all goes back to a toboggan accident in 1984 at the University of Guelph. I was in the middle of a three-person toboggan, having a great time, laughing our asses off in the dead of winter. It was so much fun. And then we were airborne and came down hard. And I heard a big crack, had the wind knocked out of me, fractured two ribs and bruised my tailbone. I wasn't laughing anymore. (laughs) And ever since then, like I said, it's my weak link. Sometimes I don't feel anything for years. And then sometimes there's stiffness or discomfort. But what happened last week was way worse. It was like scary pain, jarring. (laughs) But just here and there, it wasn't constant. So I didn't know what was going on. And on the second morning of it, I wanted to take a shower. I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if I'll have this pain in the shower. And then I thought, hmm, what would happen if it got bad and I needed help? Like if I got stuck in the shower and couldn't move. Now, I'm thinking about all this stuff when I'm actually not in pain. I had zero pain when all of this was running through my mind. I'm just getting things ready to take a shower. And I started thinking about all of it. And then it hits me. (gasps) I'm a mother of boys, three young men, and two of them are living at home. If I have a problem and got stuck in the shower, I would have to get them to help me naked, wet, and afraid afraid of having to get my guys to help me naked in the shower. (laughs) Oh my God, my mind was spinning. And you know, you can't unsee something like this. Like when you see your parents having sex when you're a kid, you can't unsee it. So I'm thinking, should I risk it? Should I take a shower? Is it gonna be okay? Oh, I decided to calm down. Like I said, I wasn't in any pain at the moment. So I decided I would go for it. I would get in the shower slowly. I would hang on to the safety bar that's in there just in case. And I wouldn't dilly-dally. I would get in, do my business, and get out. The thought of having to start calling to my guys for help while I was naked in the shower was definitely something I didn't want to think about. Thankfully, it didn't happen. I was fine. So that night at dinner, I thought it would be fun to tell them what happened that day. Everything going on in my mind. (laughs) They said they would have called dad. (laughs) A lot of good that would have done me, right? Now, you should know that they're all fully trained in first aid and CPR, the works, and I know they would have saved me. But it looks like I would have been naked 
and they would have been afraid too. <laughs> oh my God. Now, I think it would probably be a different situation with daughters. That's not my situation. But if you guys have daughters, I would love to hear from you. And tell me, what would it be like if your daughter had to help you naked and afraid? Do you think you would have as much fear as I had about thinking about my guys having to help me? The reason I wanted to bring this up with you here on the podcast, though, is because of the feeling that came up. Loud and clear, it wasn't just that I was afraid. I bet you can guess. It's that I was also feeling vulnerable. And that, my friend, is a feeling I've heard many older women talk about when they can't do something for themselves and need to ask for help, when they have a caregiver who has to help them with bathing and going to the washroom. It's a lot. And I think I was feeling a bit of that. I didn't really know what was going on with my back and how bad it might end up being. I'm happy to report I'm feeling much better now. I think it was some kind of aggravated joint pain. I don't know. But wow, just talking about body parts, pains, body functions, this sort of thing, this makes me feel old. (laughs) But it is happening. It comes up with my friends too all the time. And quite frankly, it does feel good to talk to other women about it. But getting back to feeling vulnerable, that was definitely what I was feeling. And the thought was something like, I'm going to need help. I may not be able to do this myself. Simple as that. And then I flash back to my pregnancies, another time that I was naked and afraid. I also remember feeling quite vulnerable, vulnerable needing help. And then there's feeling vulnerable being naked and partially naked so much of the time with pregnancy and breastfeeding. It's a lot we women deal with. I'll never forget something that my girlfriends and I were talking about quite a bit, though, back then. There was a bright blue Cookie Monster birthday cake involved. One of our kids had a birthday party, like all of our, you know, your friends, you're all kind of going through the same stage at the same time. There's a lot of little birthday parties, a lot of pregnancies. Remember how much fun we had making these cakes for our kids or not? (laughs) Fun and stress that is. Maybe you're an auntie and you're the one who loved doing the cakes or got roped into doing the cakes, (laughs) whatever. Well, with all of us being pregnant back then, In the same phase of life, the big fear at that time was going into labor and pooping on the table during delivery. And this blue cookie monster cake only made the fear worse because, you know, if you eat the cake and why wouldn't you? Because it's adorable and delicious. And then went into labor, you might just have blue poo on the table to boot. Oh, my God. Can you imagine the embarrassment? We talked about this all the time. Talk about being naked and afraid. Now, I know this story was really scary. Try to settle down. You don't want to pee. That would just make things worse. (laughs) You know how I like to look up definitions. So let's go there. I looked up the definition of vulnerable, and it means in need of special care, support, or protection because of age, disability, or risk of abuse or neglect. Well, there you have it. With all of these examples, something made it worse. With my back pain, I wasn't sure if it was an age-related thing, a toboggan accident-related thing, or a fluke. Or with the Cookie Monster blue poo potential disaster, one thing was for sure, I didn't like feeling vulnerable. But it was all of the uncertainty that really added to it and made it feel worse. So it looks like vulnerability is a feeling that, I'll have to get more comfortable with, and I bet you will too. In need of special care, support, or protection because of age. That's us. That's all of us. We might not need it now, but I thought I was going to need it. But for sure, as we age, we may need to ask for more help. It's highly likely. Now, there is some evidence, though, that it's possible to get more comfortable with feeling vulnerable. I remember working on vulnerability when I was pregnant, for example. That was a real process in terms of that many healthcare providers touching my body, doing all those tests, like all that stuff. It's very different. I never never even broke a bone other than a toe. I never had any kind of hospital experience before that. Can you relate? 
By the end of the pregnancy, and even the breastfeeding help, there was way less discomfort, and I felt way less vulnerable because of all that touching. It, all the touching and tests and help, it was less of a big deal, that's for sure. Now, obviously, I was thinking about things differently. It's my thoughts that created the different feeling. So remember, to shift your feeling state, you have to shift your thoughts. Thoughts create feelings, so that makes sense. And then I thought about one other time that I remember being naked and afraid. It was about 12 years ago, and I had a middle-of-the-night gallbladder attack that required emergency surgery out of the blue. And before I knew it, I was naked and afraid and had to make a quick decision about surgery, uh, like within an hour to be specific. Um, And I felt more afraid at that point. But then when I got home, that's when I felt vulnerable. I could not even lift a bag of milk. Now, you might be thinking, what is a bag of milk? (laughs) That is one of those Canadian differences. The whole bagged milk thing is common here. A bag of milk is a little more than a carton or a quart of milk, and they get sold in bags of three. So three little bags in a big bag. And that equals four liters or about a gallon. So what I'm saying is that I couldn't lift a gallon of milk when I got back after that surgery. I thought bagged milk was so weird when I moved to Canada, but now it's pretty common. Now, anyway, getting back to vulnerability, realizing that you can no longer do something can make you feel really vulnerable. So interesting, right? Now, I'm not sure if you got the memo about vulnerability, but it turns out that it's a really important emotion. Kind of a huge deal, actually. Brene Brown has done a ton of research in this area. And when I was naked and afraid, I thought I was just afraid to need help from my sons when I was naked. But you know what? It's more than that. Brene talks about vulnerability and the way we armor up. We numb it. She says it's the center of difficult emotion. But she also says that the way to live is vulnerability, even though it's scary for many of us. Now, if you haven't watched Brene Brown's TED Talk on the power of vulnerability, I highly recommend it. She says that you can't access empathy without going there, and that when you go there, you also have access to positive emotions like love, joy, and belonging. So it's worth it to embrace vulnerability. The big message here is that ultimately connection is why we're here. It's the way we're wired. We want to belong. And when we're fearful of being authentically vulnerable, when you're naked or not, (laughs) you're cutting yourself off from really being seen, being visible, being authentic. That's the armoring up part. So as you're getting older, sometimes you'll need to ask for help. It happens to all of us. Sometimes it's expected. Sometimes, like my back pain and shower predicament, it's not. But it can't hurt to think about vulnerability more before you're really in it. So here are some tips for how to be more vulnerable in general. Number one, learn to feel more everything. You've heard this before. It's important to become more connected to your feelings and the thoughts that create them. How do you do this? You slow down and check in with yourself more often. Notice your thoughts. Notice your feelings. Notice that they're connected. The more practiced you become at understanding this connection, the less fearful you'll be when your feelings are negative. You know they still come from thoughts, and thoughts are optional. It all brings you more power and control, and it all becomes less scary. Number two. Learn to be more comfortable in your own skin. This point is all about learning to love who you are for real, not who you think you should be, but who you are, your authentic self. Be less fearful of showing up as this person. Ask yourself more questions about why you resist and what you're afraid of. Don't just be afraid. Also work toward more self-compassion and bravery to really be you. And number three, speaking of bravery, Learn to be more courageous. Think about how often you make fear-based decisions because it's easier than saying the thing, facing the thing, or doing the thing that you really want. What if you just got better at feeling fear and doing things anyway? What if this is what's being courageous? This is what courage is all about. Think about it. 
knowing that you will be full of discomfort and you decide with your thinking that you're going to do it anyway, that you can handle negative emotions and that they won't kill you. Imagine that, right? So it's not that you won't have fear. It's that you will decide to move forward even though you have fear. That's courage. And courage is a feeling and you create it with a thought, your thinking, which you can practice. What if you played with thoughts that help you in times like this? Something like, I know I'm feeling nervous and that's okay. Or I'm learning to be a woman who does this sort of thing, even though it's hard for me sometimes. You see what I mean? Different feelings. This is regret proofing, my friend. This is the way you have fewer regrets in your life. It's definitely worth it to be less afraid of vulnerability, both when you're naked and when you're not. (laughs) It's another one of those ways that you can improve your life, feel more connected to who you really are, and the way you want to do midlife on purpose, one thought at a time. All right, that's it for today's episode. My focus as a midlife coach is to help you waste less time spinning and feeling stuck. It's time to get excited about your life again. So remember, being the queen of your brain domain is the best way to be. Check out the show notes with more information and links at susierosenstein.com. Download my free guide, Nine Secrets to Get Unstuck in Your 50s at susierosenstein.com forward slash nine secrets. And if you want to connect more with me in the future, awesome. Join the free Women in the Middle Community Facebook group where we continue this podcast conversation at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash women in the middle community. I also do private coaching. If you want more help applying the concepts I teach in the podcast, I invite you to apply for my personalized coaching program where we take all the things that I teach, we apply them to you and your life so you can do midlife on purpose. Book your free Get Unstuck call at www.talktosusie.com. And if you're ready to finally put yourself first, you can become a first lady. Join my new midlife membership, the Finally First Club. It's an upbeat virtual community for midlife women like you who want to stop feeling stuck and confused and finally start making the changes that you want in your next chapter. The clarity, courage, and connection you're looking for is only one click away. So join us there now. We're waiting for you. Head over to www.iamfinallyfirst.com. Let's do this, ladies. It's time for you to put yourself first, one thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next week. 